Hello, this is David again. I mitigate the expensive downtime in businesses. And in previous videos, we have replaced ISP router with more solid, more quality router at Cisco router. And in our lab in the business, we only have new router, Cisco router, and the one computer. It's a lab, what do you expect, right? But now we are going to add managed switch because that managed switch will give us the flexibility in the future to configure it with the security in mind. We can run some security protocols on it to make it more secure, which means less downtime in your business. So let's start. This is the computer. As you remember, this computer had an internet and let's see if it still has the internet. It can pick ping Google DNS and I believe it can also resolve DNS name. Yes, it can. Okay, let's close this temporarily. And this is our scenario. We have one router. We have old ISP router, which we don't need anymore. We can delete this. I wish it would be so easy in the real world, right? Just delete the router. You don't need to send it to the ISP. You don't need to set up the pickup. You don't need to drive anywhere. Just delete it. And let's add the switch. Again, in the real world, you're gonna bring the physical switch, put it there, but let's try to run a switch here. What was the switch here? Layer two, yes, layer two will do. If we need to do layer three, we will upgrade it in the future. But for now, we are just placing the switch between router and the switch and the computers because that's this will give us the flexibility to connect more uh, devices, more hosts, and configure this managed switch, like hardening security on this managed switch. Let's see what do we have? Did it boot? I think it did. It just need to hit enter. Ah, still booting. Let's wait. Oh, it's done almost. And let's check what's going on on the Cisco router. Now, this is the router. And you guys see me, right? Let's make it a little bit small. Uh, you know what? Let me bring this a little bit up because we need more room for the party windows. And Gary V just went live. You guys watch Gary V? He does some amazing job on the motivating people. Create content, he says. Here, here I am creating content. Okay. This is the switch on the right side. And on the left corner, we have router. Remember our old password which we put on this router? Cisco 123 with first letter uppercase. And here's our scenario, here's our configuration. We have two interface configured. One interface is the public IP, which was assigned dynamically from the ISP. You guys remember this ISP is my firewall in real life, right? This, uh, this cloud here is bridged to one of my firewall sub interface where I run the HCP and public IPs which are not mine, but this is a lab, so that's okay. And here's the thing. We want to connect this switch to this interface and not the next interface. Why? Because we, we decided so. We want to have the same subnet on our switch. And we want this switch to prepare with VLANs in mind. So next time, if we want to add VLAN, like extra subnet, not subnet, extra broadcast domain, I would say, because you can have extra subnet on the same broadcast domain, and we don't want that. We don't want to have the secondary IP on this router, right? We want dedicated broadcast domain for the new subnet in the future. So let's do this. We go into Gigabit Interface 2, and we, we remove the IP address. And then we, we remove the IP not inside. 
You know what? Not remove that. I wouldn't want, I don't like to use VLAN 1, but for the sake of showing you that uh, you can still have the IP on the physical interface and then have extra subnets on the tagged VLANs and tag extra subnets with VLANs, I'm gonna use VLAN 1. So let's put this configuration back there. Okay, and let's disconnect this guy from here. and connect it to the switch. So on the switch, we are going to use gigabit zero slash zero. On the router, it's gonna be gigabit two. Gigabit ethernet two, all right. And let's go to the configuration again. Now, if I remember correctly, I'm running CDP neighbors here. Oh, I'm not. Okay, let's run it. Um, CDP run. And am I running it here by default? What happened? Oh, there was a show run. Show CDP neighbors. Yes, I'm running. And let's see if our interface are up by default. Okay, it was up and it's connected now. Perfect. Now, this is the default configuration on this switch. Uh, you probably won't have this on the real, in the physical switches, but it doesn't matter. Just ignore those commands. And Let's check the CDP. Make sure we have layer two connectivity between switches, between switch and the router. The CDP table gonna take some time because it takes up to 30 seconds, I believe, if I remember it correctly, to advertise using CDP. And, you know, that's probably maximum time you have to wait in order to get CDP uh, tables propagated. And I'm still not seeing anything. That's weird. Anyway, let's ignore that for a while. Okay. Let's configure uh, IP address on the switch port. For that, we go into configuration uh, terminal and do interface VLAN 1. Now, why interface VLAN 1? Because we don't tag the traffic here. It's directly connected to the switch. You see? The, I mean, it's not a sub-interface with the VLAN tag. It's connected right away, just like that. And this traffic, once it reaches to the switch, switch will put this traffic into VLAN 1, and we want to match that VLAN 1. That's why we put uh, configuration interface VLAN 1, and we are going to configure the IP address here. Now, the IP address, if you remember correctly, if you remember at all, or if you haven't watched the previous video, I'm gonna add it somewhere in the in here in the corner and you can click that because this is the part two now here uh, I have excluded some of the IPs from the HP server so one is being used here the computer probably have, uh, has uh, I don't know uh, 11 where's my windows should I close it well, yeah, it doesn't matter. So one is being used by the router and on the switch we are going to use two. And since this range is excluded from assigning by DHP server, we are good with that. IP address 192.168.0.2. Later on in the future videos, I'm gonna show you how to replace IPs with minimal downtime because that's not the subnet you want to use in the business for sure. And was it enabled? Yes, it's enabled. Show IP interface brief. Oh, no, it's not. How come I missed that? Let's enable the interface. And now it's enabled, it's up. Let's see if we already can ping the router. One ping will drop because switch is going to yell, who has the IP? And the router will take some time to respond. Here's my here's my MAC address. I got the IP. And during that time, we lose first packet. So if we ping again, we are not gonna lose that. You see, five packets, five delivered, five replied. Now, that's it. Switch is configured with the minimum configuration. Now we can add the username password and start managing switch remotely. 
So that would be now. If you remember on the router on a previous video, we have enabled AA new model, AAA new model, and we have to do the same here. Then we have to add the username, Cisco, and the password, not password, secret, because password is not encrypted, remember? Or even if you encrypt with the global command, it's really, really easy decryptable by just Googling Cisco password decryptor or something like that. It's, it's really easy to decrypt. And our password is going to be Cisco123, and then enable secret Cisco123 again. Now we need to enable SSH. For that, we need to do domain, not domain lookup, domain name. And uh, what, what, what did we use the last time? Yeah, this is what we used. Okay. Oh, we didn't use it, did we? Huh. Domain. Yeah, we used it. Is it the part of the DHP configuration? Hold on. Let me search real quick. I think I haven't add domain name on the router at all. That's weird. How the DHP was enabled then? Huh. Anyway, and where was I? Yes, let's put the host name. Host name is gonna be new switch, new switch, and that's it. Now IP SSH version two. Oh, we ha first we need to get generate the crypto keys. Remember on the on the previous video we have generated the crypto keys. We type crypto key generate RSA and hit enter. We choose, you know, some big amount of numbers to be, you know, to make it more complex to de decipher our keys. And IP is, and SH version 2 has enabled. You know why? Because we ran the command before. Where is it? This one. Without running this command, it's going to be 1.99 version, which is not good because it's it has a bug or something like that, so it's not secure to use it. So you, you need to switch to SH version 2. And now let's go into configure into line with UI from 0 to hmm, why am oh, we need to go into configuration mode. And then line with UI 0 to 15 would be okay. And or what what did we on the previous video? I I kind of want to match it. I don't want to. Huh. It's really empty here. Oh, we didn't limit the access to SSH only. Ah, oh, I'm gonna do another video f specifically for hardening the router and the switch because this one is just placing the switch in in the business, you know. So let's remove this. Yeah, yeah, I know. I can delete the last five. Okay, let's turn it to the switch. Now, remember the IP, right? This is the IP. And if we type this on the Cisco router, uh, I kind of, I think I switched some console uh, on a party. Let me reopen that. That's, I really don't want to spend time now to figuring out that. Ah, man, that looks like log. Is there any default? Yeah. I accidentally typed something, but if you guys know that, please comment because I really don't want to spend time to search that right now. And if you comment it, I'm not gonna need to Google it either. I'm just gonna use that information you gave me. So let's tell net. Now you see this count, this prompt here. We are on the switch. Yes. Let's enable Cisco one two three again, and here we go. 
we are on the switch. So now we can manage this switch remotely. Let's get out from the switch and it's time to connect computer to that switch. Let's take this cable and connect it here. We are going to use gigabit zero slash one. That's okay. Now here's the thing, because we use VLAN one, because we use VLAN one, we don't need to configure anything on this switch to, to put the interface to put the interface in VLAN 1, but we are still going to configure it with the information we don't want to be changeable automatically based on what you connect on the switch. And that's going to be port status, port mode, I would say. So here's the thing, on the switch, let me bring myself, on the switch, on a Cisco switch, by default, the interface is in auto mode that in terms of the VLANs. So if you connect switch to switch, those ports will become trunk. That means one of this side or both side, doesn't matter. This side, this port on the switch is uh, auto configurable. And you don't want that because it's not managed by you. If someone connects the switch to your switch in the business, they'll have access to all the VLANs and you don't want that. So you want to limit the computer ports to be in access uh, mode, not the trunk or not the arrow. So let's do the access mode. Let's actually change all of them. That's gonna be gigabit. No, not gigabit. Oh, it's gigabit, yeah. So it's gonna be interface range and then we use this up to three. You know why three? Because you cannot Put two modules into one range. Let me show you what I'm what I was talking about. What I'm talking about. So if you do this, this won't work. So what you need to do is do them separately. And then again, this and this. And now you change configuration both uh, modules. So switch mode access, right? So now if you compare the default configuration which is connected to the router is not mode access. So all the other ports are going to be mode access. That means if, if you connect switch to those ports, these computer ports, the switch port will not become the trunk. Good. Now, because we don't have extra VLANs, we, we don't put any extra command here, but you could also do switch port uh, VLAN, no, not switch port, access VLAN, access VLAN, and then whichever VLAN you want to use for that port. But the switch port is by default is in VLAN 1. Let me show you this. You see uh, here, access mode, default 1. That's because the switch port is already in VLAN 1. So if you go into computer, we should be able to ping uh, outside world. Again, we also got the same IP. So if you go into router, this IP we have on the computers is fresh, like new IP, which we got again. So DHCP server binding database should be updated. DHCP binding and then just hit the enter. So this time, my router is a little bit off with the time, I think. Is it? No, actually it's for today. <laughs> no, it's off. I'm gonna have to configure NTP, but not now, because I don't know which NTP server I, IP I want to use yet, but yeah. So this is how you add the switch in your business between router and the computer. Now, all these extra ports can be used for anything, for computers, for printers, for you know the surveillance cameras, for IP phones, and stuff like that. This is it for now.